what can I say? It's the one we've been waiting for. Special guest Cass in the building. Long time coming. Welcome. All right, mate. All right, Benji. All right, mate. Cheers, All right, son. Yeah, man, it's a pleasure to be here. Very excited to be here today. No, I'm happy to have you. And I feel like we've been talking about this for forever, but everything happens when it's meant to. Congratulations on the release of your album. Cheers, bruv. It's out now on XL Recordings. What's it called? Famous Last Words. <laughs> yeah, it's a chart album now, so you've got to talk to me differently. Yeah? <laughs> Behave yourselves. Top 40 for Christmas. Top 10, my guy. Top 10. You understand? It's big talk. Yeah, yeah. But no, you know, it's been it's been fun. It's been, um, the love's been crazy, man. Mad appreciative of everyone you supported. Never expected this, so very grateful. Well, you know, we like to do things differently. And this Christmas, we thought we'd do Christmas with Cass. Cass is dead. Sort of, what are we calling this? Christmas special? I don't know. Well, I've been told I can't say certain things or draw on <laughs> certain metaphors to, you know. But I feel like the fans will know. So, yeah, let's just say it's Christmas. Festive season. Festive season. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're doing a Dead Corp special today. What is Dead Corp? That's difficult to answer in one sentence, but you know, there there are employers, the the evil overlords. So you know, we're here to do their bidding. Well, I feel like we've been playing your music for over a decade now. It feels like maybe more, maybe it must be more than that, like ten, twelve, thirteen years, something like that. Oh, you're making me sound old now, bro. Nah, it's a debut album. You know, I'm fresh. So tell us about sort of the journey of Cass is dead. Well, I mean, uh, I don't know, mate. You might have you might have more uh, of an easy job explaining that than me. <laughs> Life often gets in the way, so we find ourselves here a lot later than we expected, but, you know, we're here, innit? You know what? We're kind of like... I feel like the influences that I've always heard you draw on made me draw for these sort of tunes tonight, like what you're hearing in the background, Johnny Jewel, this kind of energy... And I know that you've brought a big stack of tunes, so we're going to go one for one a bit later and play some tunes, some music that's influenced you, if you're up for that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Big up Johnny Jewel, man. Big up Desire. But before we get into that, I think we've got to play some music from, from you and most specifically to kick things off with more music from this current album. Next tune I want to play is called Before This, which actually we played a couple of years back, I think, but the final version is now on the album. It's featuring later. Tell us about this one. This one's the ladies' favourite. I get loads of abuse if I don't play this one out. So um, I try my best to, to do as much as I can. But it's been a long time coming, this one. I had a lot of fun like pulling out some tunes before you pulled up today because I feel there's a very specific pocket of music that it's not the only lane, but there's a very specific lane of music that you love that I don't know how to, what would you call it? That I don't want to call it 80s, I don't want to call it digital, I don't want to call I don't know, I don't know what to call it, but you know, it's a specific flavor that we heard on Pat Earrings and I don't know, everything since, you know, and... I feel like I would say nostalgia, you know, like it don't necessarily have to be old, but it's like a music that kind of um, conjures imagery in your brain and makes you feel shit, you know? Mm. Like, I'm not really into the cookie cutter algorithmic stuff, man. I like to hear something that, you know, is worth me wasting my time listening to it, you know? Yeah. And like, um, it's, it's there's a vein running through all of this stuff that's kind of similar. It's like, even though the songs may, like, from an audio perspective, sound completely different, they all have that feeling, you know? Well, a lot of it has a cinematic sort of vibe as well. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's, you know, stuff you can put in your car and drive around pretending you're in a in a 80s cop movie, you know, like vibes. That's, you know, that tune that I just played by Symmetry, which is um, actually Johnny Jewel. When I saw the credits of your album and I saw that you connected with Johnny Jewel, I was like, yes, perfect, because I always saw that as a natural link up. Yeah, in terms yeah. of your taste and what and what you know, chromatics and Johnny Jewel makes and and that sort of zone of music. Yeah, Johnny man, he's a legend, icon. You know, um, 
you know, grew up watching his stuff in in films and listening to his music, and like he um he scored the album, so like the the wow. cinematic pieces um, where you you hear like the dialogue between Ed Skrine and um, Emma Rigby, he scored all of them, you know, made those soundscapes, made them come to life. He um, also brought some crazy vibes on Matt Gray rap as well. All oh, right, you know. Um, so yeah, he brought the lovely Desire along as well. He mm. blessed the record with her amazing vocals. So um, yeah, no, it was an honor to work with them both. It was like bucket list stuff for me. I don't know. I don't want to call it 80s, but there is an 80s element to a lot of your taste as well, or, or that sort of like synth synth era music synthesizer era music i don't know, you know i think that's just where it that's the origin of it really isn't it yeah like late 70s early 80s like craft work gary newman but like um exactly there you go like uh i think when i when i discovered like desire and johnny and the chromatics and that it was like i didn't actually know that there was this whole kind of like you know genre sub genre of like revival kind of like kind of like 80s revival kind of music i didn't know there was modern takes on this music i was just listening to like pet shop boys and and like human league you know so it was like a crazy journey of self discovery like proper rabbit hole i went down when i um, heard their stuff and what was the stuff you were listening to growing up like what I mean, it's loads of different... Like, that one I can't answer easily. It's loads of different people, man. Yeah, sure. From the cheesy 90s pop of my youth to, like, the, the underground rap and even the mainstream rap, you know, the mm -hmm. Mob Deep and Big, you know, Big Pun. Like, um, very wide musical tastes. You know, my mum was, like, crazy into her music. So, like, she had a mad vinyl collection of, like, anyone from Prince to Lufa to you know human league she's a massive human league fan and like um yeah so i kind of got exposed to a lot of different stuff and it's like when you get older you hear songs and you're like you, you don't even realize that you know these songs they're like embedded in your mind and it's like oh, i haven't heard that for a, that decades you know but i kind of know the lyrics and stuff because it's been indoctrinated into you you know so i blame my mum you lot can blame my mum for my eccentric taste in music well, I was amazed when I got the record. Like, I knew a lot of the material on the record, but there's one tune that I was like, you know, I love to listen to an album without, like, a preconceived idea of what I'm about to hear. So I just put it on on the headphones, and I hadn't seen on the credits Neil Tennant's name until his voice came in. Come on, Uncle And so Neil. when I, well, you know, and it's the final track, I think, on the album or towards the end of the album. And, um, yeah, so tell us about this one, Linked Up With Pet Shop Boys. I mean, that's pretty legendary. Yeah, I mean, I was I was so surprised and um, blown away, for lack of a better word, when I heard that Neil was into it and um, we started going over the lyrics together. Like, um, the song is a very difficult one to write for me. It took a long time because it was a it's a it, it tugs on the heartstrings, you know, and um, it was just a, a great honor to like I'm talking about a lot of stuff. I'm talking about my brother who passed. Um, Ren, you know, um, rest in peace, of course. And uh, we talked about some of the legends that we'd lost, Prince and uh, Freddie. And um, Neil kind of um, worked on the lyrics and like, we went back and forth. And it was honor, an honour to have Neil talk about Prince based on stuff that I'd written, you know. So, uh, yeah, big blessing from him. If you just joined us tonight... It's Christmas with Cass, myself, Benji B, special guest Cass on the co-host duties tonight. What's going on? And you just heard Walking, still sounds amazing to me, that tune. I've always loved that record. I have no idea how long ago that was from, but we played that so much on this show. Yeah, it's a long time ago now, man. Proper long time ago. And so what does that what does that conjure up for you hearing that? Which era of Cass? I don't know. I mean the the beat is just mad, you know. Mm. It's that you listen to that that beat, it's like free instruments or something. I was just saying to my guys here. And like um it's just uh they captured the the feeling of just rain and you know like being indoors and it's raining outside. Yeah. So atmospheric and like um 
Yeah, man. I don't know what they was what they was on when they made that, but I want some of that. Well, that's the thing is that at that time and still now, there's no music in your zone that exists apart from you. Like, there's no, there was no one rhyming over beats like that. When I first heard that tune, it really blew me away. Walking and that whole era, that whole EP. Well, cheers, bruv. You know um, that? Yeah, just weird, man. You know what I mean? De especially then. He's just jumping on anything, you know, anything that made us feel something we jump on. It's never been about like, you know, jumping on a song because someone has a name or whatever. Yeah. It's got, it's got to feel something. And often the songs that make me feel stuff and the ones I like the most, they end up being the most difficult ones to write, man. I have absolute nightmares with these songs. It will be some song that I just don't even take seriously that I end up banging out quickly yeah. and um, and is received well. But the ones I really like, they just, they kill me. So producers out there who have sent me stuff seven years ago and still waiting, it's not a disrespect. I probably really like your song. It's just a nightmare. <laughs> All right, it's about that time where we're going to play, we're going to go one for one tonight on this co-host Christmas with myself, Benji B and Cass is dead. And um, you selected this tune, what's this? This is uh, Desire, Black Latex, produced by Johnny Jewel. Atmospheric as it gets. Son of Radio One, Wednesday night. It's the Dead Corp takeover. Christmas with Cass. Selecting one for one. Alongside me, Benji B and um, Tuned by System Olympia in the background. Shout out to Cheska tonight. Come on, big up System Olympia. We got something cooking. Yes. We're ready to hear that. That's the perfect link up. This tune called Erotic Line. And before this one, you heard one of my favorite tunes by our special guest tonight called The Code, which I just sort of felt to play after hearing that desire tune that you played. Black Latex. Black Latex, that's it. Shout out to Desire tonight. Always. And seeing as we're in that cinematic zone, let's talk movies. Um, we were just talking off mic. A lot of the stuff that goes on off mic tonight, we can't, we can't say on mic. <laughs> but um, one of the things related to the fact that you have an overly visual mind um, and a cinematic sort of mind when you hear something or you, you can visualize a story that you're telling. And, and seeing as we're talking about that, let's talk movies. What, what are some of your favorite cinematic experiences, some of your favorite films? Oh, that's a tough one. There's so many, man. Mm. Um, if I told you one of my favourites, they'd laugh at me. But I've said it actually. I've said it publicly, publicly before. Love Actually. That's one of my favourite Christmas movies. You know what? I haven't seen that. What? Yeah. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Love Actually is that um, yeah, Hugh Grant? Hugh Grant, Marty yeah. McCutcheon. It's um, like a Richard Curtis film. Richard like, Curtis, like, like, the legend. Um, the goat of the rom -com. and yeah, yeah. Notting Hill and yeah, that sort yeah. of energy, yeah? The guy, man. Okay, Mad so cast, crazy cast. What happens in Love Actually and why is it a cast favourite? Um, oh, come on, man. I, I don't know. It's, it's a very uh, co complex, elaborate plot. You have to watch it yourself. <laughs> okay. You know, I don't think I could give you the synopsis fairly in a couple of seconds. I don't... I think if I was to put out a question last week and say... Email me questions for Cass. What do you reckon his favourite film is? I don't think that would have been at the top of hey, the hey, list. Hey, I never said it was my favourite film. I said it was my favourite Christmas film. Okay, fair enough. See, that's why I'm fair saying it's difficult enough. to answer that question. There's yeah. no one favourite film. Let's do five. Let's do five. We've got Love Actually coming in and in the sort of Christmas section. Christmas genre. So that's, you've only got four left. Um, a, a pretty obvious one is Blade Runner, I guess. Mm. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. You know, uh, Big Up Vangelis, yeah. Rest in Peace. We're going to draw for that next. Yeah, go on. Um, I, I left field one here. The Beach, Danny Boyle. Mm. That one just brings me back to, to that time. And I think that's what it is with a lot of these nostalgic films. It's like instantly I'm transported back to that time. You know, even if I wasn't alive or I wasn't of age then, I, I feel like I'm there, you know. And there's something beautiful about watching them old films in HD and 4K. It's like you can see the actors in their youth. Okay, so that's three, right? Hold on. Yeah, that's three. 
Uh, American Beauty, that's a proper favourite of mine. Mm. Um, with things like this, I feel like um, a thing is only ever as good as the sum of its parts. And I feel like this is one film that there is nothing you could do to improve upon it. Like, every facet of it is just exceptional. The, the script, the score by Thomas Newman. The score is unbelievable. You know, one of the most, one of the best film composers of all time, criminally underrated. The guy's been nominated for like 7,000 Oscars and never won. I agree. Thomas Newman's amazing. He's, he's something else. You know, um, Sam Mendes, my favourite film of his... Um, and that the the performances from the actors is just crazy, you know. Um, Kevin Spacey, like people don't even want to watch this film now because of him, but I feel like it's a great disservice to the performances of Annette Bening, um, Alison Janney, Mena Suvari, Thora Birch, like all the actors in it just killed it, man. There's so many like brilliant performances, the cinematography from Conrad Hall, rest in peace. It's like the imagery of the, the, the roses and the, you know, it's just yeah, yeah. almost a perfect film. If there is a perfect film, I'd say that it was that. Well, this is a pretty strong list and a varied list. One more. Um, come with a modern one now. Let's put It Follows. Have you seen It Follows? It's a horror film. I think it's like 20... Was it? it follows 2015, maybe earlier. It's a horror movie, but it's just um, really beautiful, aesthetically messed up plot. I won't say too much because I don't want to spoil it, spoil it for you. And the score is amazing as well. And again, there's a theme here, you know, it's like these are the films I like where the score is crazy, yeah, the the what's on screen is crazy, you know. So, um, yeah, shout out, it follows big film. December on Radio 1. You listen to Benji B late night, Wednesday night. Christmas with Cass, special guest. Cass is dead in the building. You heard um, Ultravox, a track called Alice Clark, and um, before that, one of the greatest artists from this country ever, in my opinion, Miss Kate Bush. Oh, don't get me started on Kate Bush, you know. Honestly, I have um, a muse. Yeah, man. Like, I, it's I have a connection to her. It's like I feel like maybe we would we used to date in a past life. Yeah, everyone feels that, mate. Hey, uh, don't don't step on my toes. Again, man. <laughs> talking about my <laughs> talking about my soulmate. <laughs> No, honestly, I, I listen to her music and it's like a, like a, a, like a piece of me. I don't know. It's like I miss her or something. But she's yeah. not. She's still there, you know. So, um, no, nah, big up Kate Bush. She's amazing, man. Like, definitely one of the most talented writers, not just this country, like the world has ever seen. You know, it's like she was hatched. She came out swinging at like sixteen, seventeen. You know, a hundred percent. And also like. Do you, when we were listening to that tune just then, I was thinking, you know, that is the product of freedom, isn't it? It's the product of saying, okay, let's book Abbey Road or whatever studio it was. And, oh, why don't you sit with Brian Eno for a couple of weeks and then sit with this person for a couple of weeks and having the freedom to be able to create. I don't know if that album, if it's out right now, could exist on that. Impossible. On man. that stage. Do you know what I mean? It's impossible. We've set too many bad precedents now. You know, we're stuck in this algorithmic battle mm. so you know I, I don't feel like um many people can just express themselves there's always one eye at the very least on you know the playlists and all the other rubbish which is sad but is where it is isn't it we're here yeah no definitely but if you think about that album hounds of love is it called oh. um you know with chains like mother stands for comfort and all those tunes i mean it's pretty it's pretty progressive, pretty amazing, like pioneering music. And it has now obviously become pop music, right? Because I mean, we're very familiar and it was at the time running up that hill was in the charts. And obviously it's had a resurgence recently because of Stranger Things, which I believe the composer from Stranger Things worked with you, right? Or oh, Carl Dixon. Yeah, yeah man. Shout, big shout to Carl Dixon. He made um, the first track on the album, which is a spark. Um, he's part of the collective Survive who are like sick, man. We should have had some of their joints. They got some some really stiff synth electronic stuff, man. Big fan of theirs. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Kyle blessed me with that one, man. It's um, you can just hear it as soon as you um, play the song. 
especially now once I've told you, you'll be able to hear it, man. It's cinematic as hell. Yeah. So we played Kate Bush, we played um, Ultravox. What are we going to play next? You brought some absolute bullets today, by the way. Um, That's what we do. We've got Tina Marie, we've got George Clanton, we've got SOS Band, we've got... Let's go George Clanton. Okay. Big up George um, Clanton, man, 100% electronica. As selected by a special guest, Cass in the building. I sing this one loud and, and out of tune all the time. Let's go then. <sighs> no chance, bro. <laughs> 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 no, no, not recorded. Yeah, tunes have been good tonight. Yeah, that one was one of yours, but um, that's on my playlist too. I got a big up LaRue because she showed me that one. Big up LaRue. It also features on, what's the tune she's on of yours? Park Assist. Park Assist, but of course. We're going to cook something else, you know, very soon. Like, um, I was a massive fan of LaRue back in the day, and then um, they say don't meet your heroes. But she's all right, actually. Yeah, she's wicked. Big up, Ellie, man. Um, I'll come see you soon. So tell us about that, Cass. Tell us about, um, on Famous Last Words, tell us about some of the collaborators that you've worked with and also what the process was like putting the album together, the good, the bad and the ugly. It was a lot of bad and ugly. <laughs> the good was kind of being finished and being able to have my bloody life back. But, um, yeah, I put... I put everything into it, you know. I meant it when I said that. Blood, sweat and tears. Yeah. Um, I was carried by some immensely talented people, like much more talented than myself. Shout out Connie Constance. Like she blessed the album in a serious way. And um we've got some other songs too, like some amazing some amazing bits that will hopefully come out in the next couple. Um you know, uh, Desire and Johnny Jewel, we touched on them already. Like, um, they had a, a huge impact on the album. I mean, creatively as well, like, not from a production standpoint, but Sonic's MSM engineer... Shout out MSM. ...did an absolute number on this album, and he, he handheld me through the whole process. So I feel like he's the person I need to big up the most because um, he... He respected the vision and brought his own crazy talent and technical ability to it. And then, like like I said, he stood by me. We had our bickering, punched each other up a bit. <laughs> but, um, you know, he, he stood by, man, and, and he should be proud of his input. It's crazy. Um, yeah, we, we talked about Kyle Dixon on production, the purest legend the as purest well. purest you've been working with for a long time. That's my guy, man. Mm. Um, we got some crazy stuff to come on the next one because, um, yeah, we're not hanging about. Um, there will be a next one. And talking of which, what, what's it like as an artist when you've, you've got the album out in the world and you're sort of itching to get on and make music again? Because <clears throat> I feel like you're always writing, right? And... <sighs> I mean, the the problem with a lot of this, there was a lot of red tape. So I feel like I've neglected the writing a little bit and I've just, I was just dying to get back in the studio. So that's the process now. I'm shaking off some ring rust and just getting back in, man. Um, there, What's the red tape? Um, you know what? A lot of the time it's, it's self-inflicted, man. It's me just trying to make things perfect and like my incessant and endless nudging and tweaking and, you know, just chasing perfection, which doesn't exist. I guess I found that out now. So next time I'll just keep it moving, yeah? I'll just get on with it next time. It's the Dead Corp Takeover. Benji B on Radio 1, special guest Cass at Christmas. Son of Radio 1 Wednesday night, you just heard a tune called You Weren't There Anymore, first time for me hearing that. What was that? That's Negi Jemmy, um, uh, part of 100% Electronica as well. Super, super talented producer and artist. Um, shout out 100% Electronica label. Hmm. I need to do some more digging into that label because both things that you played are fire. What was the thing before? Um, George Clanton. George Clanton, that's Makes it. the babies want to cry. Um, honestly, everything they they put out on the label is mad. It's like they curate really cool stuff. Um, they are, like Italians do it better. It's like similar vibe, you know? Right, they're, right, yeah. They're here for the music. 
and that's what made me gravitate to them. It's like music first, business after. One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent electronica. One hundred percent electronica. <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, off mic, there's been so much gold off mic while we've been playing these tunes back to back tonight. But um, one of the things that you just touched on was your favorite rap albums. And I thought, you know what? As top fives go, we've done top five films. Let's do top five rap LPs. Okay. Um, so I think we were talking about the first one I said was the HNIC mm -hmm. by Prodigy. Rest in peace. Gone way too soon, man. Uh, that one was just the most gangster shit. Like, that changed my outlook on um, rap, you know? Like, hearing the change in Prodigy from one of my favorite, other favorites, which was The Infamous, hearing his his departure from, you know, the voice and the flow of when he was a 19-year-old on Shook Ones to, you know, the HNIC when he was just so gangster. He wasn't even rhyming anymore, like, he just didn't even care. But it just sounded so cold, you know? Mm. And his choice of beats, like, his beat selection is just crazy. You can tell that um, he's a music man. You know, him and Havoc, like, Havoc made so much of those beats, you know, and um, The Alchemist, of course, but... Um, yeah, that camp is just, yeah. you know, goat stuff, man. Yeah, the music is always fire as well, you know. Always. Like, name me a, a bad Mob Deep album. It's impossible, you know. I'm going to go with the Marshall Mathers LP mm -hmm. by Eminem because that one just... That, that actually changed things. I feel like that was when I started thinking I wanted to rap because... That dude is just crazy, man. He had some, he had some problems, man. And like, he's a, he's a different beast now. Um, but like, the stuff that he did on the album still hasn't been replicated, you know. So stop pretending these guys are killing it. They're not killing it, bruv. You're lying to yourself. They ain't even, they ain't even surpassed him yet. Um, what else have we got? Uh, I'm gonna go with Capital Punishment by Big Pun. Um, big album. Rest in big geezer, man. Big geezer. <laughs> you know big, big breath intakes in yeah. between bars. Lying down. You know what I'm saying? I already recorded it lying down. Um, I need one more. I don't know. One more. It's hard, man, to choose one of all of them. No, no one's thinking of this as the definitive five. Is this five good ones? Hmm. Okay. Okay. I'll go for a slightly obvious one and say Ready to Die mm -hmm. by Big, because Big, of course, was um, a massive influence on me as well. He was like, um, you know, he... It's why I think I like Jay as well, because, like, these guys were making songs that were commercially viable, but they weren't watering down their verses or nothing and doing this ABC shit. They were spitting, like fire like crazy stuff like the most lyrical stuff and um you know big said it himself at last a rapper rapping about tits and bras menage et toise um so yeah man and that's what i like in it so rest in peace to the greats Cass, if you had to choose one book to buy someone for christmas what would it be mm. right now to, to make you lot lose sleep. Go and read or go and buy George Orwell's 1984 mm. and realise that it's become real, bruv. 2024. Yeah, yeah, 2024, <laughs> exactly. We're there, guys. So, you know, say your prayers. And what do you want for Christmas, Cass? Some sleep, man. That play. Amy's been... Uh, She's had me working. Shout out Amy. Yeah, shout out Amy. She's, she's had me work in the corner, man. I'm tired. I just want some sleep. Talking of which, um, I was away for it. I was gutted to be away for it, but I saw you played Coco, brought out gigs. It all looked mad. Yeah, that was mad, man. Shout out Hollow, man. Like, he came out and smashed it up. That was, that was a moment for me. I've always wanted to... Like, I don't think we've performed that one together, so mm. I've always wanted to see that crazy, like, reaction of him coming out to one of our home, home, home games. And, yeah, it was insane. The Coco crowd was mad. 
it was a, a really enjoyable night. Connie Constance came out and did Marilyn as well. And like, yeah, they were singing it word for word. You know, it was, it was, it was massive. Oh, congrats. It looked like a special moment. Yeah, thank you, man. Big up everyone who was there and everyone who wasn't. You know what to do. More dates to be announced. That was going to be my next question. What's, um, what's the Cassis Dead Live plan? The party will continue in the new year. Um, loads of fun. We're going to be uh, all over England and Europe at the beginning of 2024. So, yeah, pull up. Cass is dead. Thank you for making it Christmas with Cass. Thanks for um, choosing to spend your Christmas with me on Radio 1 tonight and for sharing all these amazing tunes. My pleasure, brother. Let's do it again. Yeah, this has been good. I think we've got a future in... Um, what, would, what did we decide? Podcasting. Yeah, let's do um, it. Co-hosting, back-to-back DJ sets. Uh, what else? You Car made, reviews. Bro. Let's do a film. We'll do a film as well. We're ready. 2024. Looking forward to it. But now we say a very happy Christmas from Cass and myself. Yeah, Merry Christmas, everyone. Thanks for the love. We'll see you in the new year.